Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people of Israel, the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your soil. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as he delighted in prospering your ancestors, when you obey the Lord your God by observing the commandments and degrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I am commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side and get at, of the sea for us and get it to us so that we may hear it and observe it? No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is the 25th psalm. Let us read responsibly by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let them not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. 
Lead me in your truth and teach me. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my, trans my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from Paul's letter to the Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters of Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you have learned from Epaphras, our, fellow, our beloved fellow servant. He is the faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased pray, praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may leave, lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, 
A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Please be seated. Today's gospel reading is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Yay. I will admit, I totally procrastinated on writing this sermon, which is ironic since I'm pretty sure the Good Samaritan parable is the most known parable of all scripture. Also a bit ironic because this parable only appears in Luke's gospel. Luke's gospel tends to be the gospel to focus on social justice, the actual poor and oppressed, not just the spiritually poor. It tends to feature Jesus as a compassionate and sympathetic modeling for others to be the same, and it tends to show Jesus as a teacher, using more memorable parables than the other Gospels. It's true, although Matthew has more parables, the ones we seem to remember the most are in Luke. Parables like the hidden treasure or the pearl of great price, the wicked tenant, the lost sheep, the prodigal son. There are a total of 16 unique parables in Luke's gospel, and this one, the Good Samaritan, is possibly one of the best known, which is why I was procrastinating. Because how do you write a sermon about something that everyone already knows? Not only do you all know the parable of the Good Samaritan, you've probably sat through dozens of sermons about it. Sermons trying to find a new and interesting twist in order to impart some inspired theology and original thought. And that's not really possible for this gospel reading. Because the bottom line is there really is only one moral to this parable. I mean, literally, Jesus pretty much tells the lawyer, or more accurately, the lawyer tells Jesus exactly what the parable means. Jesus asks, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This isn't some magical story of unrecognizable meaning. This is explicitly stated. The neighbor is the one who helped, the Samaritan, and we are supposed to do likewise. Help. Stop and help, support those in need, give money to the poor, yada, yada, yada. Like I said, you've heard this sermon before, dozens of times. In fact, this is probably about the time in the sermon where the preacher starts telling you to stop on the side of the road when you see a car broken down, to stop for a tourist who seems hopelessly lost in downtown Southport, 
to stop and give money to the beggar or food to the hungry or clothing to the naked. But we have to be careful not to diminish this parable and Jesus' message to simply banal appeals to celebrate or welcome the poor and the stranger. Instead, Jesus is calling us to a radical stance in this parable, a radical stance of naming the one who is our neighbor and being the neighbor to another. Amy Jill Levine is a New Testament professor at Vanderbilt University. She's pretty well known in the church scene. When looking at this parable, she challenges the reader to think of yourself as the person in the ditch. She wants you to ask yourself, who is it that if they stopped to help you, you would rather die than admit had helped you? That is what this parable is about. Go and do likewise. Be radical. Last week, Ken and Jim gave an amazing sermon. If you weren't here last Sunday, I highly recommend going online and listening to it. He covered a lot, including evangelism, which I'll come back to later. And he talked about the end of our service and how we say goodbye. Specifically, he mentioned at how the end of every service, Deacon Pam usually says something like, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And because we hear it every Sunday, we start to hear it sort of as a liturgical, bye, have a good week, instead of what it really is, a command from God. A command from God to go out into the world and be and do as Christ commands us, basically to be and do as the good Samaritan, as the neighbor who stops to help the stranger. Today, we are given the tangible actuality of what it means to go in peace, to love, and serve the Lord. We are given the tangible actuality of being the neighbor, being the Samaritan, being the one who goes out with love for God and love for the neighbor in a way that makes us radical, makes us so radical that when we then identify ourselves as Christian, people say, wait, what? Canon Jim in his sermon mentioned that we have abdicated a huge responsibility of how people think about Christians to the fundamentalists, citing the fact that people, when people say they're angry at Christians or they don't like Christians, it's often the fundamentalists that they're referring to. In this parable, the Good Samaritan is a reminder to each of us that we need to go out and share our faith, a faith that is accepting and caring and loving a faith that the world so desperately needs right now, a faith that, oddly enough, is about kindness, about forgiveness, not just rights, about mercy, not just justice, about compassion, not just equality. Because, yes, if we do practice our faith in the radical way that Jesus tells the lawyer to do in today's Gospel reading, then we will get rights and justice and equality but they're almost secondary because the primary part of our faith is forgiveness and mercy and compassion. The primary part of our faith is a divine kindness, the kindness and the compassion and the mercy to share the wonders of a God who is accepting and caring and loving, the kindness and compassion and mercy of a people who strive not just to be a neighbor, but also strive to be a neighbor like the Good Samaritan, throwing assumptions out the window to really live into the call that Jesus issues in today's Gospel reading, to really live into the call that the lawyer defines when quoting the law, to really live into the call that we agreed to when we were baptized, and every time after when we renew our baptismal vows, to really live into the call that we are issued by Deacon Pam at the end of every service, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And you know what? We've got this. We've got this in ways so much more abundant that I'm not sure you all or even I know all of the ways that we've got this. With more than 50 different ministries at St. Philip's, we fully live into our vision. And each ministry strives to do just as we as Episcopalians, as Christians, as loving and accepting and caring believers of Christ do. 
It's hard not to mention the new building. It's pretty much the only thing we're talking about and thinking about right now. And last Sunday, Canon Jim reminded us that it is our task to fill this place. And being a neighbor like the Good Samaritan will get us there to a full place. It's also hard not to mention all the other amazing ministries that are growing and starting and thriving and coming back to life now that we've gotten past Hurricane Florence and the Moose Lodge and COVID and a construction site and nowhere to meet. Did you know we have about a dozen people going to Belize on a mission trip in January? Like actually going and serving? How about the Sunday breakfasts? The first one will be July 24th, so save the date. There's a team working on building small groups in the fall. And faith formation has a plethora of offerings from Bible studies to theology discussions. How about seeing young people back at our altar? And the choir and all of our musical guests returning to lift praises to God. And our flower guild and our altar guild and Verger, who's away this weekend. Did you know we have two funerals next week? And all our amazing worship volunteers will be helping to support the families in their times of need. Plus, for the first time in years, there will be funeral receptions on property. Our Stephen ministers and our Kohai chaplains and our Eucharistic visitors are thriving in new relationships, supporting you all and even supporting those outside or on the fringes of our community. I could keep going, and I'm sure I have left people off this list, and I'm so sorry if I did, but instead, I want to conclude with one really important point. The difference between doing all of these things as Christians and doing all of these things as St. Philip's is you. You and your passions and your joys and your calls to serve God and to serve your neighbor, your passions to be like the Good Samaritan, not just stopping on the side of the road, but stopping on the side of the figurative road when someone is in an allegorical ditch. And that is what fills this place. That is what evangelism looks like. It looks like passion and joy. It looks like acceptance and caring. It looks like all of you standing up and saying, me, I will go, I will serve, here I am, Lord. And so to bring this all to a close, I invite you all to think how you can be the good Samaritan, the neighbor who stops to help the person in the ditch, and to think about how you as a community of believers, of a God who is accepting and caring and loving, can help people come out of the ditch and into the warm and welcoming space of this community of St. Philip's. Get ready for what's about to come this fall because it's going to be awesome and it's going to be all of you. And that is going to make it even more awesome because you, all of you St. Philip's, all y'all are really awesome. Amen. Y'all are ready to do the creed, aren't you? We're not going to do the creed. (laughs) Mother Lisa talked to us about called to be the Good Samaritan. How do you go out and do these things? How do you do it? I'll tell you how, and Mother Lisa referred to it in her sermon. Turn to page 292 in your Book of Common Prayer, and today we are going to renew our baptismal covenant rather than saying our Nicene Creed. And the baptismal covenant contains within it the how-tos, how we can go out and love our neighbor, how we can go out and be a neighbor, how we can love others as Jesus loves us. Page 292. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe believe in God God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, Keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name be we pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us exchange a sign of peace with one another. Good morning. Good morning. A little better than 8 o'clock. The mic died on me. 
I'm Bill Carney, the vestry person of the day. I want to welcome everyone this beautiful Sunday morning, especially those who are new or visiting with us. Please make yourself known to me or one of the clergy on your way out. Uh, those who are not so new, you have any questions or concerns, I'll be up here at the altar after the service and be glad to talk with you. Thank you, Bill. Bill did say, welcome to everyone new or visiting. And he's not really new, but we haven't seen him in a long time. Welcome home, Father Eric. Thank you. Sue's somewhere in the back there. I can't see how bright it is, but. Uh, <laughs> we had a wonderful time. We had an exhausting time. We had a terrible time. We had a very good time. It was everything wrapped up into one. You would think the tough part was walking 19 miles in a day up a good-sized mountain. The tough part, folks, was going to bed at night because that became work. 25 different beds in 30 days. My neck hurt, my back hurt, my hips hurt. Everything hurt, and it wasn't from walking. It's good to be home. It's good to be back at St. Philip's. Thank you for your prayers, and we look forward to more days of ministry together. Thanks. I promised the building would still stand, and it's standing. <laughs> and the new building is super close to being done. It's taped off again today because we put another layer of sealant on the floor. The good news is we learned from last time and timed it so it doesn't smell in here today. We are in the offices, but we're still very much in boxes. You should see his office. But save the date, as I mentioned in my sermon, July 24th, we'll have a breakfast between services, and we'll also have the offices and meeting rooms open for tours. So we look forward to showing off our new space. You're all's new space. It's just as much yours as it is ours. Um, be sure to take your blue sheet home. There's lots of things happening. Things are getting uh, back into gear. ECW is really active and a few other things going on between now and the end of the month. One thing that didn't make it that I forgot to announce at the 8 o'clock is we are starting back up the noon Eucharist on Wednesday. We took a couple of weeks off while the offices were closed. Um, so that's noon in the Chapel of the Cross on Wednesday. I believe that is everything. Father Eric. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death. You and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.